Good morning. We've come to praise the Lord today. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. And we count it a privilege to be able to be of service today, to be in the house, to be of service, to have the opportunity to praise God from the bottom of our hearts. So I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. And here we are this morning. I will be reading to you from Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory you in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Let us please happily join hands across the aisles, becoming one before him, knowing that it is not a mistake that the Lord allowed us to wake up this morning, to stand in his holy temple, to allow us to just lift up the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be here this morning. Amen. And I've come to praise the Lord. Yes, Saints, let us bow our heads. Father God, we come to lift up the name that is above all names. Jesus, the name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So we want to say right now as one body, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Lord, we are here because we need a fresh anointing from you. We need fresh fire from you, Lord God. We are here because we want to hear your word from our shepherd, and we just ask you to fall fresh on him this morning, Holy Spirit, and as you are allowing his study to come forth and to speak your words of truth to this house, we ask that Holy Spirit just move. Hover, hover over each one of us, Lord God. Move and shift our hearts, shift our thinking, Lord God, as we purposely target you as our focus. We love you, God. We love you, Lord. We need your fresh anointing this morning. We can't do it under our own power, but with you, Lord, all things are possible. So Holy Spirit, your way. And as I say that to you today, I want to say, God, we thank you for the way you've been moving through our services. We thank you for, we can see the miracles before us in our services, God. And we continue to lift up the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Messiah, our Redeemer, our Savior, God. And we are grateful 
that we can breathe in and out. So we ask that as we praise your name in this sanctuary, not only will you hear the cries of Shiloh that are in the house, but for those who are traveling afar, Father God, keep a hedge of protection on them. Give them traveling mercy. We ask that you bless those in our community, Father, who have lost loved ones and that are hurting this morning. We just love you, Lord. And we know that we cannot do life without you. So stir us up afresh. And we want to lay our burdens down today before you. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is anybody excited about being in the house of the Lord today? Did anybody come to bless his name? Come on. Everybody, everybody put our hands together. Come on and let's bless the name of the Lord. For it's great and greatly to be praised. Everybody put your hands together. Come on, somebody, somebody just make some noise in this house. Everybody clap.
Father. Louder. Louder. 
God, your love, your love goes, goes deeper. deeper. Come on, somebody bless him. Woo! And that's why we sing Hosanna in the highest. Let our king be lifted up. Is that anybody's cry of your heart today? That you want your king to be lifted up? In spite of what you're going through, in spite of how you feel right now. The fact of the matter is that our king should be lifted up over every situation over every issue he should be magnified and glorified and so just for five seconds just lift your hands and talk to him just speak to him like he's your daddy tell him something good bless his name Woo! we love you god say something precious to him it's not about your neighbor it's not about who's standing and sitting beside you it's about your intimate relationship with your intimate fellowship with him Woo! Yeah! It's a very simple worship song that says, Hosanna in the highest land. In the highest, in the highest. Let our king, let our king, Hosanna. Come on, Sister Frieda Macklin, help me sing it. Hosanna.
Hosanna. Hosanna. Come on, sister Dada. Hosanna. Come on, sister.
those hands together all over the sanctuary come on come on if you know God is worthy to be praised if you know God is worthy of your praise if you know he's worthy of the glory put those sanctified hands together and give him glory in the house for when the praises go up the blessings come down is there anybody here today blessed of the Lord is there anybody here thank God for Jesus do we have anybody here give him glory in the house Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning, Shiloh. This is the day the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. How many are still excited about Jesus on today? Amen. I see Sister Lincoln's good seeing you today. Amen. God bless you. Listen, listen. We got guests in the house. Do we have any visitors in the house? Please wave your hand. Visitors in the house. First time, let's give God praise in the house. All right, Shiloh, we know how we do it. We do it how we do it. Let's make our visitors feel welcome. Shiloh, let us fellowship and bless God for Shiloh.
joyful noise unto the Lord. Before we have our official announcements, I'm going to ask Deacon Smalley if he will come forward for an announcement. And then following his announcement, please give your eyes to the screen. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Shiloh. Um, I'm here to let you know that uh, we need to get those ads in. Today is the last day. So um, if you want to get an ad in, and we should, we, should fill that, we should fill that book up. It's our church. You know, you know what I mean? And if you don't get an ad, you can still, for $5, you can get your name printed in the book. So, and all you have to do after service, see me, give me $5. Give me seventy dollars. Give me one hundred thirty-five dollars, and 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 I can take care of it. And book, but we should all ministries should support our own church. It's a one hundred and thirty-fifth year anniversary. We're we're the oldest oldest church. I think we're the oldest black church in York. And so we are, our 135th anniversary ought to be awesome. And everybody should support it. So I'm asking you, when you at the church, I'm going to stick around. And I write down, everybody give me money. I write you down. So I know who gives me money. And I do take cash, checks, I, no credit cards, but no food stamps. But again, Shiloh. Let's support our own anniversary. All right? Amen. God bless. Amen. God bless. Good morning, and welcome to Shiloh News Network. These are your announcements for the month of August. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Psalm 145.3. Show your support for our 2020 Mortgage Elimination Capital Campaign by sowing a special $20 gift above the regular tithes and offerings on first Sundays. All 2020 mortgage contributions are tax deductible. Bible study with Dr. Walthour will convene on tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. During the month of August, we will have general study and will resume our study on kingdom principles in September. Questions and answers begin at 6.30 p.m. and all are invited to attend. In celebration of our 135th church anniversary, our youth grades K through 12 will present a church oratorical. Presentations can be in the form of essays, poems, or spoken word. Children and youth are encouraged to participate and will be recognized. For sign-up details, see Sister Bert Lee, Sister Cheryl Reynolds, or Sister Marion Anderson. The Compassion Ministry is in need of our summer clothing, and you can help. The ministry meets first and third Saturdays of each month at 9.30 a.m. For more information, please contact Sister Rochelle Orr. Shiloh Church Campus will be at rest during the month of August. Most ministries and activities will be at rest until the month of September. Major church ministries will operate on a case-by-case -case basis. For more information, contact the main office. On Thursday, August 24th at 7 p.m., Shiloh will host the York Westside Neighborhood Association meeting. Join our pastor as he leads efforts with the city to take back our streets, reduce crime in our community, and provide a safe haven for children, youth, and families. Invite someone and bring a friend. The Shiloh Youth Ministry will be distributing free book bags, school supplies, and snacks immediately following our 10 a.m. worship experience this morning. For information, see Reverend Craig Mabel or a youth ministry representative. 
Patrons and ads for our upcoming 135th church anniversary are now being accepted. Full page ads are $135, half page ads are $70, and quarter page ads are $35. See Reverend Linda Dickerson for more details. All checks and money orders must be payable to Shiloh Baptist Church. Deadline is tonight at 8 p.m. Tickets for Shiloh's church anniversary stage play, silent but oh so loud, are now available. On September 9th at 2 p.m., come out and join us as we celebrate God's favor to Shiloh over the years. Tickets are $12 for adults and $5 for youth. For more information, please contact Lady Michelle Walthour, Sister Mary of Anderson, or the main office. On Friday, September 8th at 7 p.m., we will celebrate a praise and worship homecoming gospel night. The celebration is open to the public. For more information, see Brother Norman McMillan. Shiloh's 135th church anniversary celebration will convene on the weekend of September 9th through 10th, 2017. Activities include the Friday night musical, Saturday afternoon stage play, and Sunday worship services. Our guest speakers for the anniversary Sunday will be Dr. Michael Johnson, senior pastor of the Sixth Avenue Baptist Church of Pensacola, Florida, and Reverend Donnell Sanders, senior pastor of the Antioch Baptist Church of Fort White, Florida. You don't want to miss this celebration. Spread the word. Shiloh services are now broadcast on the White Rose Station, Channel 16, on Sundays at 7.30 a.m., Tuesdays, 5 o'clock p.m., Fridays, 1.30 p.m. Tune in for a blessing. Shiloh is streaming on Facebook Live for our Sunday worship experience and Monday Bible study series. Live stream with us on our website, on Facebook page, and contact us by liking our Facebook or following us on Twitter and Instagram. Send us your likes, comments, and shout outs. On September 4th at 6 p.m., we will have our SALT meeting with our leadership support staff. All these servants and leaders are to be in attendance for our support and strategy sessions. Dr. Waltower's weekly sermons or sermon series packages are available for purchase in the Welcome Center. Purchase CDs, DVDs, and Sunday School material in the Welcome Center immediately following our 10 a.m. worship experience. You can financially support our multimedia ministry by sowing a seed and indicating the amount on your envelope. For ordering and purchase information, see the bookstore staff. Thank you for tuning in to Shiloh News Network for your morning announcements. Shiloh, let us now stand and receive our senior pastor, Dr. Larry Waltower. Come on, Shiloh, put those hands together. Come on, put those hands together. All over the sanctuary, the Lord is good and he's blessed, he's worthy to be praised. Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning, Shiloh. This is the day the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Do me a favor and help us welcome those on the World Wide Web that are tuning in on Facebook Live. We thank you for tuning in with us on today. And Shiloh, help us welcome Pastor Michael Evans of Lancaster. Let's give God praise for him. He's going to be doing our sermonic selection on today. Before we give pastoral, um, you may be seated. Before we give pastoral observations, we're going to ask Reverend Mabel to come and give us some insight and instructions on for our youth back to school giveaway immediately following our services as well as an activity going on in the park. Let's church say amen as he comes. Um, immediately following our worship experience, uh, we're going to um, have any and every kid that's going back to school could come downstairs in the fellowship hall, follow the direction of the youth staff, and they would receive a free book bag with school supplies. Amen? Amen. And Shiloh, we want to thank you. The youth ministry want to thank you for your continual contribution and support to the youth of our church as well as those within the city. Amen? And um, Shiloh has partnered with Maryland Bible College 
for their outreach. So at one o'clock in Bands Park, uh, Maryland Bible College will have former NBA players in the park for, for just a day of outreach, trying to connect the community in light of everything that's going on in our nation. And um, we all are invited. There's going to be free food and fellowship, so you all are welcome. They are looking forward to, sh to seeing Shiloh people. Amen. His, his holy name. Amen. And definitely, we want to definitely support uh, what is happening in our community in regards to what is happening in our nation. I want to I wanna read in your hearing um, a, a word from the Lord from the book of Ezekiel. I'm not preaching from this text, but I want you to understand the timelessness of God's word that God's word speaks to us in spite of the time that we live in. Um, that's why Jesus says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall never pass away. I want to read from you from the book of, of Ezekiel, chapter number 22, and verse number 27. Your politicians are like wolves, prowling and killing and rapaciously taking whatever they want. Your preachers cover up for the politicians by pretending to have received visions and special revelations. They say this is what the Lord says. This is what God, the master says, when God hasn't said so much as one word. Extortion is rife. Robbery is epidemic. The poor and needy are abused. Outsiders are kicked around at will with no access to justice. These words were written by Ezekiel almost 3,000 years ago, and they are just as relevant now as they were then. As a matter of fact, if I did not tell you this was in the Bible, this is the message version of this text. If I did not tell you that I was reading from the Word of God, you would have thought Ezekiel was talking to us today. As pastors, as preachers, we have to make the word of God relevant to what is happening in our society. And people are asking, is there a word from the Lord? And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that God is still speaking. I wish I had a praying church. You ought to shout right on that. Amen. That, that God is still speaking. And, and so in spite of what we hear coming from our nation's capital, what's coming over television and various means of communication, it is very imperative, beloved, that we bring God's kingdom into every act. Wherever we go, let's change the atmosphere. I wish I had a witness. Wherever we show up, let's change the atmosphere. And when we change the atmosphere, because, beloved, whether you want to believe this or not, what we are seeing is not a legislative issue. It is not a political issue. It is a sin issue. The, 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 the debauchery that we see, the depravity that we see, the, the hate and vitriol that we see and what we hear, it is a reflection of sin. But how many know when Jesus comes into your life, he makes a difference? Amen. How many can testify that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I, I would have been the one. I would have been one of the ones. But I thank God that he looked beyond my fault and saw my needs. And so I want to encourage you, Shiloh. I want, to, I want you to understand that God is bigger than what we are facing. And as a matter of fact, God has seen this before. He, th there's nothing new under the sun. And so because God has seen this before, I'm so glad I'm on the winning side. I'm so glad that the God I serve is able to handle all of our problems. And so we ought to give God a praise on today. Bless his holy name. And so we want to encourage you, beloved, to our visitors. We thank God for you. And when uh, the, the usher should have gotten to you and when you give today, we're asking that you please make sure that you put the contact information in the offering tray so that we can get back uh, with you and make contact with you. We have a very special guest with us today. He's going to come and bless us with our sermonic 
uh, uh, song of preparation. Uh, he is Pastor Michael Evans, and he's going to come now and bless God in song. Let the church say amen. He sings and he plays. That there is a God who is not phased by my circumstance or my situation. He's not phased by what people say or what people do or what I used to have that I don't.
Come on, Shiloh. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with it is it is well it is well with my soul praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord oh Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, men only, men only, men only. It is well, men. Ladies, men, ladies, it is well, it is well, it is well. With my soul. Come on, put those sanctified hands together. If you can testify that after all I've been through, I still got joy. After all I've been through, I can still say it is well with my soul. I've had to cry sometimes, but it's well. I've had to mourn sometimes, but it's well. I've been up sometimes, but it's well. I've been down sometimes, but it's well. Trouble in my way, it's well. Gotta cry sometimes, it's well. Trouble in my way, it's well. Gotta mourn sometimes. Lie awake at night, but that's all right. I know somebody can fix it. You ought to put your hands together and give God some praise. I feel like praising his name. I feel like giving him glory. I feel like praising his name. Oh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus. I'm about to run right about now. And all that is done for me. Anybody here got joy? Anybody here got joy? Anybody here got joy? Come on, give them glory. Give them glory. Give them glory. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I promise I wasn't going to do that today. I promise I wasn't going to act undignified today. We got guests in the house. I promised myself I was going to be dignified. But something on the inside started working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life ain't he all right ain't he all right ain't he all right can the church say yes can the church say yes hey, yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm really, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm really. There's a praise in this house. It's about to, it, it's about to be on. Strongholds are about to be broken. Chains are about to be unloosed. 
Somebody ought to give him glory in the house. Hey, 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 yes. I'm going to try to behave myself.
My God. My God. There are some things I do not know. And there are some places I may not go. But this one thing, be rest assured that God is real. For I can feel him deep within. Yes, God is real. I wish I had a witness here that can testify that God is real. We serve a real God. We may not understand everything, the complexities about him, but he's real. And because he's real, I can hold on just a little bit longer. I came here today, I felt like throwing in the towel, but because God is real, I feel a little stronger now. Because God is real, I can, I can face tomorrow. We serve a real God, Jeff, he's real. Bernie, he, he's real. Nick, he's real. John P. Key had it right when he says Jesus is real. I know Jesus is real to me. He's real. Yes, God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Oh, yes, God is real. God's real. He's real in my soul. <laughs> yes, God is real. Oh, he has washed and made me whole, made me whole. Well, here's a love for me. It's like pure gold. Oh, yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Yes, God is real. God is real. Real in my soul. Yes, God. For he and made me whole his love for me is like is like pure gold that's because the anointing is in the house yes god is real come on shiloh i know you this one's for you. 
all over the house. Yes, God is real. Everybody. Oh, yes, God. Come on, let's just worship the Lord. That's a good worship moment. That's a good worship moment. That's a good worship moment. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on us today. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on us today and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer in Jesus name we pray amen come on let's give God praise for his presence amen I I feel like I've been in church. I, 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 I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm in church on today. I would like to call your attention to the book of First Kings, chapter number six. I'm sorry, Second Kings, chapter number six. Second Kings. Chapter number six, verses one through seven. We are so grateful to have all of you here today. And it's, it's a blessing to have the honored guest in the house. Amen. Amen. I, somebody just said it. He, he's here. Amen. And. Whenever the Lord is here, everything is going to be all right. Amen. And I, I thank God that we feel his spirit in the house on today. The book of 2 Kings, chapter number 6, verse number 1 through 7. And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with you is too straight for us. Let us go, and we pray thee unto Jordan, and take there every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. But one said, Be content, I pray thee, I go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. And so he went with them, and when they came down to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it there into the water. And the iron did swim. The iron did swim. And therefore, he said, take it up to use or to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. For just a few moments today, look at your neighbor, say text time. Amen. It's text time, not time to text, but it's text time. It's text time. Don't, don't, don't start texting just yet. It's it's text time. It's word time. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I had it 
I lost it, and I want it all back. Amen. I, I had it. I lost it, and I want it all back. You, you ought to shout just, just to know that you can get it all back. Amen. This text, thank you. This text today is rooted in the reality that in life all of us will suffer loss. This text today finds us looking at the life of Elisha. And as we look at the life of Elisha, Elisha is the successor to Elijah. And as we look at Elisha, we would discover that Elisha's name means my God saves. And you ought to shout over the fact that you have a God that is able to deliver. His name Elisha means he is, he is the successor of Elijah. Who, whose name means God is my salvation, but Elisha comes after Elijah, and his name means my God saves. And, and, and so Elijah says that God is my salvation. Elisha says my God saves. You missed it. That, 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 that Elisha is somebody, Elijah is somebody else's testimony. But Elisha is your testimony. Elijah tells me that God is able to save, but you can't know that God is able to save unless you've been in a situation where God showed up and brought you out of it. And do I have anybody here that can testify that we have a God that is able to save us out of life's difficult circumstances? This, this, this name, Elisha, as we look at, 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 at 2 Kings chapter number four verses one through seven through chapter number six we discover that that there's seven miracles in the life of elisha and and seven is the number of completion as we as we look at the life of elisha in chapter number four through chapter number six we see seven miracles in the life of elisha and and these miracles remind us that God is Jehovah Jireh. He's the Lord that will provide. And do I have anybody here can testify that God showed up and made a difference in your life? He is the God that is able to provide. The first miracle in the life of Elisha found in 2 Kings chapter number 4 verses 1 through 7. We find the miracle of the widow's oil. In chapter number uh, 4, verse 8 through 37, we see the, the miracle of the Shumanite's son. In chapter number 4, verse 38 through 41, we see the miracle of the pot of pottage. In chapter number 4, verse 42 through 44, he feeds a hundred men with little or nothing. In chapter number 5, verse 19, he heals Naaman of leprosy. In chapter number 5, verses 20 through 27, he, he deals with the greed of his servant, Geasi. But here in the text, in chapter number 6, verse 1 through 7, he causes the axe head to float how does God get in an impossible situation and make impossible things possible we serve a God that operates outside of impossibility and and, and what faith tells me that that whatever I had and whatever I lost I have a God that's able to give it back to me. That there have been some things in my life I've had. There have been some things in my life I've lost. But God allowed me to get back the things that I had and the things that I lost. And he gave it back with interest. You, you ought to shout right about there. That, that the enemy thought he had you. The devil thought he had you. Your enemies thought you wouldn't survive it. But here you are on the other side of what you lost. And when you look back at what you lost 
and you see what God has given you, you give God praise for the loss. Because if I hadn't had the loss, I wouldn't be in a position for the gain. I wish I had a prayer, prayer in church. And, and sometimes God has to allow you to lose some stuff in order to gain some stuff. God has to take you through dry seasons for you to enjoy the, the abundance of the rain. Is there anybody here that can testify that I've been through the storm? I've been through the rain. I've been up. I've been down. But I'm still standing on the grace of an eternal God. These seven miracles remind us, uh, uh, Jermaine, that, that God is a God of provision. The widow's oil, the Shumanite son, the pot of pottage, the feeding of the hundred, hundred men, the, the healing of Naaman, Gehazi's greed, and the axe head miracle reminds us that in spite of all improbabilities, in spite of all impossibilities, there is nothing impossible with God. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I don't care what you are facing. There is nothing impossible with God. If you got breath in your body, you got hope if you are alive today you've got hope if you're still standing today you have hope yes it gets hard sometimes but God is still on your side yes you feel like throwing in the towel sometime but God is still on your side you've got to be able to look at your situation and tell your situation it's still well with my soul This, this, these two miracles, the first miracle and the second miracle, they, they, they are connected in the text. Because when you look at the first and the last miracle, the, 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 the first miracle and the last miracle, the, 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 widow, the widow's oil and the axe head miracle, both of these miracles deals with borrowing. In, 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 in the miracle of of the widow's oil Elisha tells the widow to go borrow vessels to go borrow on trust but in this text the text that we read today he borrows a tool in the first miracle of borrowing the widow borrows based on trust she goes to Elisha and tells Elisha listen the creditors have come my husband has died and my boys are about to be sold into slavery Elisha tells her to go and borrow vessels of all your friends go and get as many as you can and 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 when you get your vessels you and your sons go get the one pot of oil that you have and take that one pot and just start pouring. Y'all missed a shout moment. Because what God is able to do in your situation, he'll take the little bit that you got and stretch it to meet your need. Somebody just had a flashback. I did not have a whole lot. But somehow between what I had and what I got, God made the difference. He, he tells her uh, to go, Isabella, and borrow based on trust. And they take the pot and they start pouring the oil and pouring the oil and pouring the oil. And the oil continued to pour. She filled five pots, ten, continued to full flow, ten pots, continued to flow, fifteen pots, continued to flow. And the Bible says that when she filled the last pot, the oil stopped flowing. I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't misinterpret a pause for a period. She pours the oil in the pot. She pours the oil in the pot. But as the pot is filled, she has to go get another pot to continue pouring the oil. See, we think God has stopped pouring when he's just gotten another pot to pour in. You missed a shout moment. It's not that God has stopped pouring in your life. He's just going to get another pot for him to pour more into your life. 
And so what I understand is, while God is on pause, I need to begin my praise. I don't know who I'm talking to today. That when God is in his pause season, you start praising God. Why? Because of what he's already given you, but praise him for what's yet to come. The text says here today, brothers and sisters, that he borrows, she borrows based on trust. To make a long story short, she pours and she pours and she pours. She sells the oil, lives off the rest. You must understand that God will always give you more than what you need. You need to shout over the fact that God gave me more than what I asked for. You ought to give God praise today because some of us are praising God on overflow. That I didn't have what I needed when I had it, but God somehow stretched what I had to meet a need. And that's the kind of God that we serve, that when times get tough, we serve a timeless God. When things get hard, we serve a faithful God. When the going gets rough and the rough gets going, we serve a God that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We serve a God that says, through the fire, I'll be there. Through the flood, I'll be there. When you walk through the rivers it won't overcome you why because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world do i have anybody here that can testify that i made it because god brought me over in the borrow in, in the borrow trust we see the borrow two. notice the two borrowing miracles borrowing the trust and borrowed tools, a borrowed trust and a borrowed tools. Uh, uh, in other words, trust tool that God gives you. A borrowed trust and a borrowed tool. A borrowed trust. Go borrow vessels. Go trust your neighbors. Trust your friends. But then a borrowed tool. What are you saying, Reverend? You've got to trust the tools that God has given you. You've got to trust the word that God has placed in you. You've got to trust the faith that God has given you. You've got to trust the joy that God has produced in you. You've got to trust the long suffering that God has given you. You've got to trust the, 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 the overcoming power that lives in you. Trust your tool. And when you trust your tool, you'll be able to say, I had it, I lost it, and I want it all back. This miracle today finds the sons of the prophet going to Elisha. And Elisha, Elisha, beloved, um, finds himself going down to Jordan. Jordan is is a place where they go the sons of the prophets come to elijah and say listen where we living where we are ministering is too small we've got a we we, we we need a bigger facility let's go down to jordan let's go build a greater facility elijah gives them permission jeff says go one of the ones that's in the school of prophets goes back to elijah and says elisha Will you come with us? Remember now, Elisha means my God saves. And you should never start a journey in life without having the salvation of God with you. You ought not ever start out on anything in life and God is not with you. The text says, Sister Beverly, that he goes to Elisha. His name means, my God saved, Dr. Dickerson. Elisha goes with them. Watch this. Because the fact that Elisha went with them suggests that they did not have to go find him when trouble showed up. And when God is with you and trouble shows up, you don't have to go find God God will find you. Do I have a witness in this house? So as we look at the pericope, as we look at the text, as we look at this teachable moment, what, 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 how do I get back what I had? How do I get back what I lost? Well, the first reality in the text is that you must take back what carries your momentum. If you're going to get back what you had, and get back what you lost, you must take back that which carries your 
momentum. Verse 4 says, so Elisha went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Notice the text. They went. They came. They cut. They went. They came. They cut. They went. They came. They cut. You'll never be able to do what God has called you to do if you don't start moving from where you are. And some of us miss the move of God because God is moving and we are maintaining. The text says that there's movement or momentum in the text. They went, they went, they went from here to there. And when they came to where they were going, they cut down wood. Don't miss this because the name Jordan means uh, uh, to flow downward or descend. They went to a place called Jordan. Jordan means descend or downward flow. Notice what they do when they get where they're going. Jordan means downward and they start cutting down wood. Could it be that things are happening in your life because it is a manifestation of the location that you are? They get to Jordan and Jordan means descend or downward flow. And look at the text. When they get to Jordan, they start manifesting in their life what the name Jordan means. And sometimes when we get to certain places in our lives and we don't know where we are, where we are begins to manifest in our persona. Wait, let me help you. When you start hanging around low down people, it affects you. When you start hanging around no good people, it affects you. My mother said it this way, Larry, corrupt communication, destroy good manners. The Bible says it this way, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Why? Because if I stand in the way of sinners, the way of sinful ways will affect my life. If I walk in the counsel of the ungodly, the counsel of the ungodly will mess with my mind. If I sit in the seat of scornful people, I'll begin to scorn people myself. But how many know that when you get around people that's favored by God, that's going somewhere, that's moving in life, that got favor and abundance in their life. When God blesses them, he'll bless you. I said I wasn't going to hoop today, but I feel, I feel my help coming on. I feel, feel like preaching. Look at your neighbor and say, preach, man. I'm really trying. I'm really trying. He, he, he says, he says, he says, he gets to Jordan, which means descend, which means down with flow. And when they get to Jordan, they began to cut down wood. They began to cut down wood. So they went. They came and they cut. They went. They came and they cut. They journeyed together. They came to Jordan. And when they got there, they began to cut down wood. But not only, not only, not only must, 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 must you take back uh, uh, what has carried your momentum, you must also take back which has been communicated with the man of God. Watch this. You got to take back what carried your momentum. What, what carried them? The axe is why they went. They went to cut down wood. So the axe head suggests that which carried them to where they were going. They were not just arbitrarily traveling. They were traveling with purpose. And the axe head suggests and symbolizes that which gives us momentum. Let me help you. You got to have something in your life that gives your life meaning. You got to have something in your life that gives your life 
purpose. You got to have something in your life that gives your life passion. You got to have something in your life that gives your life drive. You got to have something in your life that gives your life motivation because if you don't have something that drives you, you'll be driven by any and everybody. And so the axe head represents that which drives them to where they're going. Jane, they're going to Jordan. The axe head symbolizes what's driving them. They, they had the axe head. They lose the axe head. But now they got to get it back. And how do I get it back? I got I to gotta take back that which has carried my momentum. I got to take back that which has been communicated by the man of God. Look at the text. Verse number five, the Bible says, as one of them was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. No, notice the text. The text says here that one was felling a beam, and I, I believe in my Watharian spirit. Now, 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 you won't find this in the text. This is not a textual analysis. This is a Watharian insight. I believe because the text says earlier that one came to Elisha and asked him to go. Verse 5 says, as one was felling a beam. I believe the one in verse 5 was the same one that invited Elisha to go on the journey. Because the text does not say, and another. It uses the same language in the text which is consistent, which would suggest that the one who invited Elisha in the first place was the very one working to do the one or the work when they got there. And when that one was cutting down a beam, the axe head fell into the water. Notice what the one says. The Bible says, Craig, he cried. And said, alas, master. Then he says, for it was borrowed. That, that messed me up in the text. The, I looked at that text. I looked at, I looked at it. I looked at it. I'm looking at it right now. And it messed me up because, because as I look at what the man said, Jeff, the man said, alas, master, exclamation point. Which would suggest that this man cried with a loud voice. But what comes after it says, for it was borrowed, period. Which means the decree of his voice changed. He was yelling when he says, alas, master. But he was almost whispering when he said it was borrowed. You missed the point. When God is with you, you may have to cry to get his attention. But you don't have to cry when he shows up. When he says, alas, master, Elisha is away from him. When he says, for it was borrowed, Elisha is close to him. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is that once God has gotten close to you, stop yelling for his attention. You don't have to keep on crying when God has showed up. You don't have to keep on uh, 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 yelling for his attention when he's right there in the room with you. And look, notice what he says. He says, for it was borrowed. He says, alas, master, gets his attention. Elisha comes to where he is, and then he tells Elisha, it was borrowed. That word borrowed, uh, uh, Dr. Dickinson, in the Greek, uh, in the Hebrew, is the word sha'al, sha'al, sha'al. And what it means, it means to ask, it means to inquire, it means to beg, it means to pray for. He's not saying that the axe head belongs to somebody else. He's saying, I had to go through hell to get this axe head. How do you handle losing something that you've been praying for for a long time how do you handle praying and praying and praying and praying and when god finally gives you what you've been praying for something happens in life and you lose the very thing you've been praying for all your life he's not saying the axe head belongs to somebody else he's saying i had to pray to god 
to get the axe head. And after all these prayers, God entrusted me with the axe head. And even though it was mine, it really belonged to him. How do you handle losing things that God has entrusted you with? How do you handle broken dreams and broken lives and broken promises and broken situations? I had it. I lost it. But I decree today I'm going to get it all back. I feel like preaching right about now. He, he says, it was borrowed, which means to inquire, beg for, or prayed for. Not only must you take back that which has carried your momentum, not only must you take back that which has been communicated with the man of God, notice the text that, Shiloh, you need a man of God in your life. You got to have somebody that's going to speak life into your situation. And many of us, what happens in our lives, rather than having people speak in us, we have people to speak to us. When you're going through crisis in your life, you need somebody that's connected to the kingdom. You need somebody that's able to speak joy into a situation when you have no joy. Can I get a witness here? The Bible says here that he takes back that which was communicated with the man of God. He communicates directly with Elisha. He doesn't go to the other who were there. He doesn't go to the others who was a part of the school of the prophets. He goes directly to Elisha. And what the text is telling us is when trouble knocks on your door, be very careful who you invite to share the load with you. You got to have somebody that can do something about the situation. Do I have a witness here? You ought to get, you ought to get happy right about there that, 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 that God brought you through some stuff, not because it was so much about you, but you had somebody with you. That when trouble showed up, you didn't have to go far to find him. He was right there with you. And finally, in addition to taking back just today, that which carries your momentum, in addition to taking back uh, that which uh, 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 is communicated by the man of God, uh, finally, you must take back that which is connected to your miracle. You got to take back. The very thing that is connected to your miracle. Look at the text. Verse number six, I'm almost done. The man of God said, where did it fall? He showed him the place where it fell and he cut down a stick. Cast the stick in the water and the iron did swim. Don't, 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 don't miss this, y'all, because I'm about to shout right about now. The text says, watch this, that the man of God said, I told you that you got to have a man or a representative of God in your situation. Why? Because God acts on the activity of the word of his servant. Look at what the text says. Elisha says which means that God begins to move on the word that comes out of the man of God's mouth, which means this, this sermon, you need to make sure that when the devil comes in your life and tries to take anything from you, you ought to stand up and say, I had it. I lost it, but I'm going to get it all back. You have to have some spiritual swag that when all hell is hounding at your heels, you can just stand and know God is going to fight your battles. Anybody here know God will fight your battles? 
I got some witnesses on the third row that'll tell you that God will fight your battles. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. The text says here, the man of God said, where did it fall? He showed him a place. The Bible says he cuts down a stick, throws in water, and the, the iron did flow. The word swim here in the Hebrew is the word to suff, to suff. What it means is to flood, to float, or to overflow. Don't miss this. Because notice the chronology of the text. I told you, let's look at this. They, they traveled down together. That's one. They came down to Jordan. That's two. They cut down wood. That's three. The axe head fell down in the water. That's four. Elisha cut down a branch. That's five. Elisha tossed the branch down into the water. That's six. And then the Bible says the iron did float. They go down together. They go down to the Jordan. They cut down wood. The axe head falls down in the water. Elisha cuts down a branch, throws the branch down into the water. And when the branch goes down, the iron comes up. I'm trying to help you. That no matter how many times you've been down, God is able to get you back up again. Somebody ought to shout right about there because I've been down in my life a whole lot of times. But no matter how many times I've been down, God always found a way to get us back up again. I got some witnesses in the house right about now. Can I hoop today, y'all? Uh, Elisha. Let's look at this. I'm, I'm done. They, they cut down wood. Elisha cuts down the branch. What you got to understand about this branch, the Bible calls it a stick, but the transliteration is a branch. That the branch represented the branch. In, in, in Jeremiah, God says, I'm going to give you a branch, capital B, capital R, capital A, capital N, capital C, capital H, H, which was a prophecy about Jesus. And God says, I'm going to give you a branch of righteousness. Here in the text, Elisha, whose name means my God saves, which means that God's salvation cut down a branch on a hill far away. There was a stick on called the cross. And God cut down that cross, tossed that cross into my situation. And when the branch was tossed into my situation, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. So deeply staying within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters of my troubled soul lifted me now save am i and so what elisha does he's a he's a foreshadow of what god did for all of us the same way elisha cut down the branch and threw the branch in the water and the axe head came up jesus was cut down on the cross buried in a borrowed tomb and because he got up i'm here today somebody here ought to give god praise that you were able to get up because he got up now brothers and sisters as i hasten to my close the bible says in verse number seven therefore look at your neighbor and say therefore elisha says to the man take it up to yourself the Bible says he put out his hand and took it. I want you to know something about miracles, brother. That when God does a miracle in your life, you have to take part in the miracle. So many times we miss the miracle move of God because we want God to do everything. 
But every miracle that God ever did in the Bible required participation by the person he was doing the miracle for. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. And what God is trying to get you to understand is that I can do it for you. But there are some things you got to do for yourself. Can I get a witness here? I said I wasn't going to do this today, but I'm, I'm sorry, Lord. I feel your spirit. And so the Bible says here that uh, Elisha, a man, takes down this branch. He puts it in the water of, of trials and tribulations. And when the branch comes in, the axe head comes up. And I don't know about you today, but I'm glad today that I serve a God that was able to get in my situation. He wasn't able or he wasn't afraid to step into the very thing that had me bound. And that's the joy that we have in serving Jesus, that he gets in our situation. And somebody here today ought to give God praise because he got in the midst of your bad situation and gave you joy when you really didn't have any joy. He turned things around in your life because you had it, you lost it, and he gave it all back. And look at your neighbor, say, neighbor... I'm getting ready for a comeback. Somebody here ought to give God praise for the comeback. You thought you had me, but I'm coming back. You thought I was out the game, but I'm coming back. You thought I didn't have any joy, but I'm coming back. Is there anybody here today that can give God praise that you're coming back? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Shout yes. If he did it for you, you ought to give him praise. If he did it for you, you ought to be a witness. If he made a way out of no way, if he paid your bills, if he put food on your table, if he put clothes on your back, you ought to stand up, be a witness, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I had it. I lost it, but I'm taking it back. Look at your neighbor. Take them by the hand. Hold their hand and say, neighbor, let's take it back. Take it back. Go to your home. Take back your home. Go on your job. Take back your job. Come in the church. Take back the atmosphere. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I would have been dead a long time ago. But I'm still here because he came into my situation. I'm still standing because better days are coming. By and by, anybody here, can you give them glory? Shout yeah, say yes. I say he's all right. And he's all right. If you know he's all right, look at somebody. Say neighbor, oh neighbor, I decree, I declare, I'm getting it back. I'm taking it back. I'm not staying down no more. Cross the line. I'm taking it back. I'm taking back everything that the enemy stole. I'm taking back everything that God gave me. Ain't he all right? Shall ye yeah? Shall ye yeah? Hey, 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 all right. 
I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done, I'm done. Who I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But is there anybody here that can wave your hand and give God a thank you for making a way out of no way? Anybody here can wave your hand. Tell them thank you for opening my doors. Tell them thank you for making a way out of no way. Tell them thank you. You ought to thank them because you turned your situation around. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Every time I look around, I tell him thank you. Ain't he all right? Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Ah, yes! Take it back, take it back. Take it back, take it back. Take it back, take it back. Take back your joy. Take back your peace. Take back your testimony. Take back your marriage. Take back your anointing. Take back your assignment. Take back what the devil stole. Take back your children. Take back your house. I wish I had a witness in here. Tell people, tell three people, tell them, take it back, take it back, take it back. Tell three people, take, take it back, take it back, take it back, take it back. Today, whatever you had and whatever you lost, I decree you're taking it back. I had it. I lost it. But I'm taking it back. Deacon Baxter, you took it back. That's why you're here today. Deacon Rice, you took it back. Anybody here can testify? I'm here because I took some stuff back. The devil said I wasn't going to make it, but I took it back. And so Elisha reminds us, beloved, that we're able to take back what God has given us, even when it becomes lost because of unforeseen circumstances. There is nothing in the text that tells us why the axe head fell. It just said it fell. Sometimes things happen in your life just because. And you have to understand that God can handle the just because moments. When things happen that I can't explain, he makes sense out of senseless situations. The, the, the Bible doesn't tell us why it happened. It just tells us what happened. And there are some things in your life that has happened. And you don't know why they happened, but you do know what happened. What happened? He brought me through. I don't know why I had to go through it, but I thank God I went through it because he brought me through. And when he, when he brought me through, he gave me a testimony. I would have never known what God can do. I would have never known God can bring me out if I wasn't in. If I wasn't in trouble, I wouldn't know what it means to be out of trouble. When I was a young man like you, many times I was in trouble with mama and daddy, grandma and neighborhood. But I thank God that when I was in trouble, every now and then they spared me. And say, I'm going to let you by this time, but don't let it happen again. How come I appreciated those moments of being spared? Because I had many moments of trouble. And when you've been in trouble, you can appreciate coming out of trouble. And that's all I'm trying to tell you, that, that no matter where you are in life, Sister Maddie, we serve a God that can bring us out of what we're in, even when we get in it and don't know why we're there. He's that kind of God. And so, and so we serve a faithful God. And so if you're here today 
and you had some things and you lost some things and you want to take back some things, the invitation to discipleship is extended. If you want to be a part of a kingdom connection, if you want to be a part of a kingdom crew, if you want to be a part of a kingdom association of believers, the doors of the church are open. The invitation to discipleship is extended. If you're here today and you're looking for a church home, you could come. If you're looking for that connection with Christ, you could come. If you're looking for kingdom connections, you could come. We are we are offering you Christ today. Is there one? Is there one? I, I had it. I lost it. And I got to get it back. I, I, I had. I had. I had it. I lost it. I'm I'm taking it back. Is there another? Is there another? I'm I'm taking it back. I'm I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming. I'm coming. Is there another? I'm I'm coming back. I'm I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Is there another? Is there another? I'm 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 coming. I'm coming. I got to make that connection. I had it. I lost it. I'm coming back. Is there another? Is there another? I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming. I'm coming. I, I made the connection. I'm, I had it. I lost it. But I'm taking it back. I'm, I'm taking it back. I had joy. I lost joy, but I'm taking joy back. I had my love. I lost my love, but I'm taking love back. I had peace. I lost peace, but I'm taking my peace back. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? This is your moment. Maybe you want restoration. Maybe you want reconciliation. Maybe you want prayer. You could come. You could come. You could come. You could come. We have three that have come. And let's give God praise for the three. Let's give God praise. I'm reaching. Taking. And I. For I shall. And I. I shall recover. We have three that's come today. We've seen them before. We know this young man, Brother Jeff Haynes. Let's give God praise for him, and he's coming. I know a lot of people thought he was already a member of Shiloh, but he wasn't. He's just a, he just a member um, by proxy, but now he's a member officially. Amen. And he's coming today to be a part of Shiloh. He will be a part of Shiloh. He's coming to make Shiloh his home. Amen. Amen. And we have here this young lady. All right, we have here Sister Alyssa, and she's coming to be a part of Shiloh. She wants to make Shiloh her home. Amen. And we have here this brother, I met him yesterday, Brother Chris. Brother Chris, is it Taylor? Roberts. Chris Roberts. Chris Roberts. And he's coming back. He was at Shiloh for many years, working. He came in yesterday. We started ministering to him. Uh, Reverend Mabel ministered to him. I ministered to him. Deacon John ministered to him. He told us he was going to be here today. He said, I'm coming back. And he's here to come back to Shiloh. Amen. And we receive him. Now, Shallow, we have three that's come. Let's give God praise for these three. And they're coming under Christian experience. And so we thank God today for the increase. And so we're going to ask that they uh, take them in the back. Before they go, um, we want to definitely have a word of prayer. So Shallow, just stretch your hands this way. Stretch your hands this way. Father God, we thank you for this increase. 
Thank you for Sister Alyssa. Thank you for Brother Jeff. Thank you for Brother Chris. And we pray, oh God, right now, even if they come a part of Shiloh, that they will become abundant in the things of the kingdom. We speak kingdom over their lives. We speak uh, uh, prosperity and, and favor and abundance in their life. We come against every stronghold that the enemy may be desiring. We, we come against the strongholds of, 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 of life in, in, in their lives. And we pray, oh God, right now that what they had and what they lost, you would begin to give it back, oh God. Restore, revive, and renew. And we give you the praise right now in Jesus name. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise today. God bless you, Shiloh. They're going to take him in the back. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. God is good. All right. Thank God for the increase. Amen. So wonderful to see God moving in the house. It's Tiffany, good seeing you today. Amen. Well, it's a whole lot of love in that corner. That's the love corner. Amen. You may be seated, Shiloh. I want to take just a few moments. As we prepare our hearts for giving, as we prepare our hearts for giving, I want, I don't do this often, but I want to, I want to use this as a teaching moment. Is that all right? Um, because you can give without worship, but you can't worship without giving. And so as we move into giving, somebody say giving. Um, giving is a part of who we are um, as, as kingdomites. It is imperative that we learn the the gift of giving. And, and as we move forward, um, I want to share something with you uh, today. Just, just give me five minutes. Um, as we move into giving, we've been talking about 2020. And everybody knows what the 2020 is. And 2020 is in the year 2020, we want to be able to burn our mortgage. Amen. Amen to be able to burn our mortgage because debt is a curse. The Bible says the borrower is the servant to the lender. And so whoever you are indebted to, you are servant. You are in servitude. And that's why the Bible says I will make you lenders and not borrowers. And so even if you have a mortgage, anything that you have a debt on, don't pay the bill. Now, we say that's my house. Don't pay your mortgage. You're going to see how much of that house is yours. It's not your house until you pay the mortgage, and then even after you own the house, you don't own the land. That's why you have to pay taxes, because the land belongs to the city. So you pay the city taxes on the land that your house is on. And so as we move into understanding debt, somebody say debt. So debt is a curse. And so, and, and so Shiloh, God has blessed us. Amen. God has blessed us. Are y'all ready back there? Amen. With the finance. God, God has blessed us. And I want to I just, just help us understand this. this. This is for debt reduction. Somebody say debt reduction. Now, I want to get this in your spirit. It's like, well, Pastor, you already preached. Yes. But I'm trying to pour into you now because your blessings is tied to your giving. Your blessings from God is tied to your giving. God does not bless stinginess. The Bible says God loves a cheerful. And can I tell you what that word cheerful? Let me, let me tell you how we should be giving. The Bible means laughing. That's what that word means in the Greek. We should be so joyful when it's time to give that we should be coming down the aisle just laughing with joy that God has blessed us to be able to give whatever it is we're giving. You know. 
We want to be, we want to be joyful givers. And so I, want, so I want to get this in your spirit. So, so, so this is the spirit that God has given us to prepare, promote, propel, Shiloh to the next phase of kingdom ministry by eradicating our debt and, and building a facility to holistically minister to people's needs. We've got to meet people where they are. Jesus was a touching Savior. He met people where they were. And as a church, we got to meet people where they are. Because as God began to send people in, and he's going to send them in, we got to be ready to meet their needs. I wish I had a witness here. And so, and so, and so we, we support this by, by, by tithes, offerings, free will giving, and sowing the $20 per month. Uh, we're asking every member, every member, why? Why is this so important? Next slide. Let's look at what Shallow is given, uh, God has given Shallow. That's our properties. We ought to celebrate what God has given us. We got property. That's just a small microcosm of what God has given this church. In addition to all that, we got parking lots. You, you need to know what you are a part of. You are a part of a blessed house. You are a part of a blessed church. You are a part of a blessed ministry, and you ought to celebrate that. We ought to thank God. You're part of a blessed house. That means that if this house is blessed, guess what? Your house is going to be blessed because you are connected to a blessed house. Next slide. That shows us where our, our property in the city. On, where we are right now, we own half a block. We own half of this block that we own right now. And on the south side, we own about almost a block and a half. So when you look at all of our properties, we're looking at about uh, almost two, to, about two blocks. We own two blocks in York City. Let's, y'all, so. Uh, <laughs> Reverend, where you going? I'm glad you asked. Next slide. Our plan. You see that extension on this side? You've been seeing this for quite some time. I want to show you what it's going to look like when we build it. I want to begin, I want you to begin the visual because you got to see yourself in something before you get in it. You got to see. And if you don't, if you don't see what we're giving, if you don't see why I'm asking you to give, if you don't see where we're going, you won't support it. So I want to try to take you on a rendering inside. And we're, we're going to eventually get a virtual tour that we'll be able to show you of how it's going to look. But, but, but next slide. I'm going to show you the, show you the lobby. That, that, that's the lobby area. That's, that's the Shiloh Center for Cultural Diversity. And so when you walk into the administrative offices and welcome center, community outreach and career opportunities, this is what we're working for. This is why I spend much time at this office. This is why I spend much time at this church because I'm, I'm trying to get us to understand where we're going. And, and I'm trying to get us to understand that we can't get here without everybody on board. Are y'all with me? All right, so that's the lobby. Next slide. That's the conference room and business center. That's, these are, co these are computer-generated renderings. That's not real stuff. That's computer-generated stuff. And so we want to have in our building a conference room and business center where people could come in and rent out our facility for their business, business meetings and conferences and, and right here in the community where Shiloh is meeting the needs. Next slide. That's our classroom, the Shiloh Academy of Excellence, a private school where we begin to educate our children and, and use, and watch this, since it's a private school, if we have teachers in Shiloh, guess what we can do? Hire our own teachers. Jobs and careers. Putting jobs and putting money back into our community, hiring and staffing. So that we can meet people's needs and, and put, put food on their table and be a blessing to their family. So that's our, our, our private school, the Shiloh Academy of Excellence, educating, equipping, and enlightening our youth. Next slide. Um, um, that's our student study hall and resource center where our students can come in and have a quiet area to go and study. <laughs> Part of our, our academy. Uh, now, all this is computerized. This is computerized. This is computer graphics. Next slide. Um, our multi-purpose meeting rooms, 
where we can have multi, multi, multiple activities going on at the same time without, without um, wearing out one particular area of ministry. Um, next slide. Our a Taste of Excellence Banquet Facility. A Taste of Excellence. Because Shiloh is about excellence. And so in that building, we want to be able to put a banquet facility where we don't have to go doing anniversaries and different stuff and functions. We don't have to go nowhere. It's right here in Shiloh, and other people can come and use our facilities. And, and that's revenue for the ministry, but it's also giving back to our communities. Are, are y'all with me here? And hopefully from that, we can have our own culinary uh, uh, ministry here where we put people on staff where when they're renting out, we have our own cooks and our own designers and our own decorators in-house where we're able to put people on staff to run this banquet facility. Next slide. Um, our Children and Youth Activity Center and computer, computer Lab where our children can come and have a place where they can learn and be safe from bullets and gangs and violence and, and all these other things. They can come here and, 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 and be safe in a safe environment. So our, our, our Children and Youth Activity Center, uh, giving our children alternatives and options. Next slide. A seniors only activity and fitness center. You, you can't even get in there if you're not 55. You got to be 55 to get in there. And so we want to give back to our seniors because one day I'm going to be a senior. Bless his holy name. I'm five years away now from 55. So, 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 so you won't even be able to go in that room unless you have 55. They're going to be asking for your ID. Amen. So, so, so we get our children and youth, but we also want to take care of our seniors and have activities for our seniors and fitness and health for our seniors. That's what we're building for the future. Next slide. Um, Excel Cafe and Coffee Bar. You don't have to go to Starbucks. We're going to have Excel Cafe on Shiloh campus. Amen. 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 And, 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 and so in between services, and we want that to be going uh, um, during the week where, where people who are in the area and they're working in the area, they can come right here to Excel Cafe and support and get top-notch stuff just like you get at Starbucks. We're going to put them out of business. Amen. We're gonna, man, what you can get at Starbucks for $5, you get it for $4.99 with us. All right. So serving breakfast, brunch, and lunch. And so we want to have our own cafe. Uh, next slide. Uh, our job placement center where you can come into Shiloh and we can help get you an opportunity, help get you job opportunities, help you with resume planning, help you with job skills training, computer training. These are the things that, we, that we're trying to build for. Next slide. Community credit union and banking. We're in that building. We will have either our own or we will sublease to somebody. But we want to bring banking to this area where they give loans and, and, and car loans, uh, uh, home refinancing at top-notch rates, giving back into this community and giving Shiloh members top preference. So if you're a member of Shiloh and you need a loan and you can't get a loan, go, go to the credit union. Amen. We're going to give you a Shiloh card so you can, amen, make sure that you're a member. All right. Next slide. This is what we're giving. All right. So I promise. Shiloh shows up in the Bible in Genesis 49 and 10. And I'm almost done. I want you to just see this. So when you're giving on a Sunday, remember these slides. Remember this. Genesis 49 and 10 is where Shiloh shows up in the Bible. And I want you to understand what Shiloh means biblically. Because name means something with God. And if you're a part of a church and you don't know the meaning of the name, you don't know the nature of the church. God moves in churches based on the nature of the name. The name means something. So when you talk about Shiloh, what does this word mean biblically? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him Shiloh shall be the gathering of all people. That is the verse of scripture where Shiloh shows up in the first time. Four principles about Shiloh you need to know. Shiloh number one represents praise. Can the church say praise? praise? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Judah means praise. When we come to Shiloh, we ought to be bringing praise with us. 
because praise is a part of Shiloh. The first thing the Bible says about Shiloh is that Shiloh represents praise. Can the church say praise? So Shilohites, if you are a part of Shiloh, you've got to bring praise when you come. Not only is uh, Shiloh a place of praise, it's also a place of position, that we are positionally placed here. The lawgiver between its feet. Not only does Shiloh mean, mean praise, it means position. And so when you are a part of Shiloh, you are being positionally put by God for prosperity. That's what Shiloh means. It is a place of praise. It's a place of position, but it's also a place of peace. Shiloh means peace. When I first came to Shiloh, I'm not sure if you all heard this, but I, 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 when I first came here from Florida, I did, a, I did a composite study on Shiloh. We sit on Locust Street and Salem. We sit between Locust and Salem. That's not College Avenue. That's not College. That's Salem. Co college is on this side of Hawthorne, and it picks up on Belvedere. The street right behind us is Salem Avenue. Salem. It's interesting because you would think that would be college, but it's not. It's Salem. In the Bible, locust represents destruction. Locusts come to take. Locusts come to eat. Locusts come to destroy. We are facing locusts, but when people leave, they go to Salam, which means peace. Salem Avenue is peace. So God sends people from the world where they've been torn apart by locusts. They've been beat down. They've been, they've been drugged down. They've been beat down. They've been hemmed down. But when they come into this place of peace, they leave on Salem Street, which is the Prince of Peace. Watch this. And behind us is a park which represents rest and relaxation. And on the other side of the park, there's a river. And when we cross that river, we'll study war no more. That's what I mean when I say position. So shallow, it means praise, it means position, it means peace, but it also means prosperity. Unto him shall be the gathering of the people. If we want to fill this house, let Jesus in this place. If you want to fill this house, when you show up, bring your praise with you. Bring your worship with you. And we will have experiences with God like we had this morning. And that's what people are looking for. So this is, this is our promise. Next slide. I'm almost done. This is our promise. This is our purpose. We, our purpose is excellence. That's our purpose. Can the church say excellence? That's who we are. Finally, um, how do we do this? Our prosperity. Final, final, the final slide is our prosperity. Um, this is how we fund God's kingdom. Honoring God with our tithes, honoring God with our offerings, honoring God with our free will gifts, and honoring God with our sacrificial gifts. Now, I've shown you where we're going. I've given you a visual of what we're trying to do. We need everybody who's a part of Shiloh to get on board. We need everybody who's, on, who's a part of Shiloh. If you believe in what I just showed you, and, and, and that building is... The plans is next door. That's our property. You do realize that property next door is ours. So that building we just walked through, we're planning on building that right next door. So when you come into Shiloh, you come into a place where every need is met. And we're also trying to also get a, get a position with Wellspan um, where if we have enough space, they can put a community office in there for this community as well. So we'll have banking, uh, medical, and everything we can do to help people live and live in kingdom living. Let's celebrate that today. That's what we, that's, now we need you to support this. And so as Reverend Dickinson come, as only she can, to lead us in giving, um, we're going to bless God in giving. We need everybody to, to give today. If you have not given your sacrificial gift, you see where we're going. You know what we're trying to do. I want you today, since you see it, if you, if you see it, if you believe it, stand with us because we can't do this without you. We surveyed this church, and surveys are out front. If you have not surveyed yet, please get a survey and turn it to the main office. We have the surveys. I've read the surveys. I've heard your voice. And we want to do better so that everybody know where we're going. And so every now and then on Sundays like this, I may take a few moments after service to make sure we're all on the same page. So as we bless God in giving, get, get your offering, get your tithe, get your gift. Remember, 
We can give without worship, but we cannot worship without giving. Can you repeat that with me? We can give without worship, but we cannot worship worship Worship. without giving. giving. Worship and giving goes hand in hand. We cannot worship God without giving. And so I'm not begging you. I'm not badgering you. I'm asking you to support the ministry through tithes, offerings, sacrificial giving, and free will gifts. God bless you. Reverend Dickinson is going to come. And then Reverend Mabel and I will pray for our youth um, immediately following the offering. Amen. Churches, we, today we know that we're pressing through the night in tears. But after this sermon and after this projection of what Shiloh is standing for and purpose to do, there are no tears. I'm feeling the joy of the morning. And it is in the joy of the morning that we're taking it all back. Anything that the devil has taken from us. So as we take it back, we can trust God for jobs and better jobs. We can trust God for bills paid off. In the church and in the home, we can trust God for finding money in the house, out of the house, on the job, around the corner. We're trusting God today for peace in the home. And we are standing on the word of God. So you are in the hands of the ushers. Amen. Amen. It makes no difference what you're going through. My God's going to solve it and he's going to see you through. So hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. So get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. It makes no difference what you're going through. God's going to solve it. And he's going to see you through. So hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. 